This is what if Naruto had family left part 2. Enjoy the video and if you do please like and subscribe. Spirals hidden in the leaves by Mr. Spinner. Chapter 3. 8 in the following morning found Ken and Naruto waiting at training ground 13. A flat plain dotted with large boulders that ranged from the size of a bench to ones that could be mistaken for small cliffs. Having arrived quite a bit early, to Naruto's chagrin, Ken was taking the time waiting for the academy instructors to examine Naruto's taijutsu skills. Little more than a year into the curriculum, the boy's skills were predictably unrefined. But that actually suited Ken's plans perfectly, it meant Naruto wasn't too set in the motions of Kanaha's academy style. As the practice spar went on, he was utilizing one form of the Uzumaki style that he had learned from his grandfather. Whenever Naruto came at him, he flowed out of the way like the wind or water, occasionally striking back at Naruto's unprotected limbs or back. Stay still, Naruto shouted, his frustration making him even more sloppy. Why would I do that? Ken asked rhetorically. Your enemies definitely won't stay still and let you hit them. And so neither will I. The point of training is to get you faster, stronger, and more versatile than them so that you can hit them. If Ken were being honest, he was actually a bit impressed with Naruto's work. Granted, he had no experience with the Konoha Academy style, but Naruto seemed to be a naturally unpredictable fighter. He never pulled the same trick twice, even with the long list of tricks he'd gotten up to. Tricks like kicking sand into Ken's eyes or attacking the legs. Well then stop dodging and block something. Naruto shouted. He grinned a bit and added, are you scared? Naruto delivered another punch, and was stopped cold. Ken's open hand had blocked his fist as if it were nothing. Maybe you're right, kiddo, Ken said with an unnerving grin. Maybe it's time I stopped dodging. Those words were all the warning Naruto had before Ken struck him with an open palm strike in the chest. A strike that sent him skidding back a good five feet to land on his butt. He had no time to shake off the dizziness before Ken's battle cry echoed from above. Naruto acted on pure instinct and rolled out of the way, leaving Ken's fist to smash into the ground. Naruto could barely get to his feet before Ken was all over him, cycling through punches and kicks with blinding speed. Of course, unbeknownst to him, Ken was holding back. He was judging how well Naruto could keep his composure to avoid damage. His expression twisted into an unsettling mix of grin and grimace at the memory of his own taijutsu training at an even younger age. His grandfather had taken full advantage of the Uzumaki clan's naturally resilient demeanor and had pushed him to the brink over and over again. Just as he would do with Naruto. Not out of cruelty, but necessity. Because he needed to learn, and because he knew that Naruto could handle it. Naruto, on his end, could barely get a wayward thought in. This was nothing like taijutsu training at the academy. A single distraction would lead to a nasty punch or kick, and so he had to focus utterly on anticipating what could be coming. The spar blurred by, a haze of adrenaline and reflex, until Ken leapt backward and motioned for him to stop. Not bad, kiddo. You've got the makings of real talent. We just need to draw that out. Naruto nodded through his heavy breathing, trying to heave oxygen into his starving lungs. If there was any doubt in his mind that his new cousin could teach him well, it was gone. Well, at least as far as hand-to-hand -hand fighting went. With ninjutsu, he still had yet to show any skills aside from sealing. The distinct sound of clapping echoed across the field, the sound somehow, mocking. Oh yes, Sir Uzumaki, a voice familiar to Naruto called. You can run circles around a year two academy student, very impressive. Perhaps we should just promote him to Hokage right now, eh, Uruka? Ken turned to find an unusual group coming his way. The two men taking the lead were clearly instructors judging by their basic chunin attire, one with shoulder-length white hair and a faint sneer. The other with a brown ponytail and a scar across the bridge of his nose. The other two had more nuanced clothing along with the markings of Jonin, or elite ninja. One had a high, spiked ponytail of dark hair and a goatee, stud earrings, and two scars across the right side of his face. The other Jonin had silvery hair swept up to the left, his left eye covered by his headband and a mask covering the lower half of his face. Hi, Instructor Aruka, Naruto shouted, his fatigue clearly forgotten. He ran to further greet the scarred Chunin, who greeted him back quite warmly. The other instructor seemed content to ignore the boy, instead sizing Ken up. 
Ken nodded at him, the bare necessity of formality, and turned his attention to the two janin. Ken Uzumaki, he introduced himself, holding out a hand for a shake. The scarred janin grinned faintly and shook the proffered hand. I'm Shikaku Nara, janin commander of Konoha, he said. Those two are Uruka Yumino and Mizuki, your examiners. And this here is Kakashi Hitaki, who will be a second opinion from a janin perspective. Ken froze up at the mention of the second name, his gaze darting to Kakashi. You're Kakashi Hitaki, he asked. As in the copy ninja Kakashi. That's me, Kakashi replied lazily, arching an eyebrow. Ken swallowed thickly as he tried to suppress his sudden excitement to a manageable level. He grabbed Kakashi's hand and began shaking it with vigor. Oh man, I'm a huge fan, he said, almost fanboying. I can't believe I get to meet you. He glanced down at his hand, still shaking Kakshi's. I, ah, uh, I'm shaking your hand too long. He released the silverette and put his hands in his pockets, face burning with embarrassment. Kakashi snorted a laugh and shook his hand out a bit. Guess it's kinda nice to be recognized by someone who's not trying to kill me, he commented. Ah, look at that. The Cyclops has a new friend, Mizuki commented. The tone seemed lighthearted, but Ken distinctly heard a hint of malice in the words. He immediately decided he didn't care for this man. Well, if that's settled, Shikaku said, grabbing everyone's attention, let's get this show on the road and over with. He gestured to the instructors. Gentlemen, he's all yours. With that, he and Kakashi disappeared in a swirl of leaves to reappear at the top of a nearby pillar of stone. Naruto, Uruka said, perhaps you should back away, too. We can't have you getting hit by a stray shot, you know. Naruto pouted for a second before looking to Ken for confirmation, an action that warmed his heart. Hold on, kiddo, he commented, crossing the first two fingers of each hand in a hand sign unique to a single technique. Shadow clone technique. In a burst of smoke, another Ken appeared and tossed Naruto over his shoulder. In a swirl of dust, the clone appeared next to the Jonin and deposited the boy before dispersing into another cloud of smoke. Ken grinned at Naruto's distant odd look. You know the shadow clone technique. Mizuki shouted in surprise and indignation. Yeah, Ken confirmed. It was, ah, uh, taught to Uzushiogakur by its creator, Toborama Senju. As a thank you for some work the Uzumaki had done to improve Kanaha's original security barrier. He chose not to bore them with the notion that it had become something of an unofficial rite of passage for mid to upper level Uzushio ninja. The Uzumaki clan's naturally large chakra reserves being naturally suited to the technique. Very impressive, Uruka commended kindly. But making shadow clones is not the only indicator of skill. A fully developed ninja must have more diversity. Uruka continued by explaining that their examination would first entail a verbal quiz of various subjects covered in the academy, such as geography, biology, and strategy. The Hokage had given them intel that he was already proficient in reading, writing, and mathematics. After Uruka delivered the verbal test, marking down Ken's answers they moved on to the second phase, Taijutsu and weapon skills. Mizuki and I will take turns sparring with you, each barehanded and with weapons, then test your marksmanship. Ken nodded his understanding and took on a stance unfamiliar to the instructors. Mizuki shrugged it off and got into the standard Konoha stance. With Uruka's command to begin, he launched forward, and met nothing but air. Like he had with Naruto, Ken had nimbly dodged the lunge and ended up at Mizuki's back to deliver a fierce strike. Ken had to admit that it was more difficult to spar with a chunin like Mizuki, having to block more often, but not overly difficult. His grandfather, as a former Whirlpool Anbu in addition to Seal Master, had drilled him as hard as he thought Ken could take it since he was four years old. And it definitely showed going all out to show his examiners just what he could do. Mizuki could hardly land a hit even as he was slowly being covered with abrasions and bruises. After several minutes of Mizuki growing slowly more frustrated and achy, and with that more careless in his tactics, Uruka stopped the spar and took his place. Ken had decided to go a bit easier on Uruka, but not by much. As the spar continued, he failed to notice that Kakashi had shifted his headband to reveal the red and black tomo of a Sharingan eye. Shikaku, while lacking the famed copy wheel eye, had excellent observation skills in his own right and was analyzing Ken's style. 
Naruto was too stunned to even cheer for his cousin, his mouth hanging open in awe and a grin ready to spring to his face at the thought of upcoming training. About five minutes into the spar, Uruka called a break to take up weapons and brought out two kunai. Ken replied with a wakazashi short sword, the blade black as a shadow and inscribed with sealing formulae glinting in the morning sun. After several more minutes of sparring, Uruka backed off in motion for the spar to end, casting a dirty look at Mizuki for not stopping the spar himself. Mizuki just shrugged unrepentantly. Next came the marksmanship examination, for which Uruka unfurled a long ceiling scroll and revealed a series of wooden posts and straw-filled dummies. Ken placed a hand on a ceiling tag at his belt to reveal a collection of kunai and shuriken. With a string of quick movements, he had flung all he needed at his given targets with a rough 9 out of 10 kill shot. More than acceptable accuracy. Well done indeed, Uzumaki, Uruka commended. On the inside, Uruka was even more pleased. He'd had his reservations about a complete unknown taking over Naruto's care and personal training, and he was glad to see that that latter part, at least, would be covered. Finally, he continued, we'd like to review your general ninjutsu. As with our academy students, we'd like to start with three standard E-rank techniques. The transformation, substitution, and clone techniques. Taking that as his instructions, Ken formed a hand seal and was replaced in a puff of smoke by a near-perfect copy of Uruka, followed by a copy of Mizuki, Shikaku, Kakashi, and Naruto. With a quick combination of seals, he disappeared to be replaced by a number of rocks, reappearing behind the instructors. And finally, with a hand seal, he repeated the shadow clone technique. Will that suffice for the clone technique? he asked. Uruka chuckled while Mizuki rolled his eyes. I suppose so. Now we move on to something less traditional. What other ninjutsu are you familiar with besides the body flicker? Ken took a moment to consider his answer. I am very well versed in the sealing arts, it's a clan thing. I'll admit I'm no ninjutsu specialist, but I know more than a few. Mostly clan techniques, really, which I mastered yin release in order to use. I have an affinity for earth chakra and have mastered a few of those, and I've begun work on lightning release, but have yet to learn any techniques for it. You're already working on your third element. Mizuki asked. Yeah, sure. Talk is cheap. Let's see a demonstration. Mizuki. Uruka scolded, but was stopped by an acquiescing open palm from Ken. That's fair. And I guess the appearance of the techniques will get out eventually. He glanced up at Naruto and the Jonin. But first. He conjured a shadow clone, which then flickered up to the observers and spoke with Naruto. The boy stomped his foot and cried out something illegible, but eventually covered his eyes with a huff. After the clone had dispersed, Ken nodded with a grin. He didn't particularly want to hide his ninjutsu prowess from his little cousin, but he had a feeling that the kid would badger him incessantly if he caught a taste of what Ken could teach him. Besides, he wanted the debut of their secret clan techniques to be a more private matter. Okay, gentlemen, Ken said, hopping backward to get some distance, send an ninjutsu at me. Uruka hesitated, but Mizuki took his chance for payback. With a string of hand seals and the thought, earth release. Boulder shrapnel, Mizuki struck the ground to bounce up a large rock that he kicked and shattered into sharp smaller pieces that flew at Ken. But long before they could make their mark, a massive wall of earth sculpted to look like a brick wall and carved with the Uzumaki swirl rose up to intercept them. The earth release, earth style wall, Uruka commented, going through his own hand seals. Fire release, dragon fire technique, Uruka thought, spewing a stream of flames that dispersed against the barrier with barely a singe. A faint rumble in the ground heralded Ken bursting from below them and dragging Mizuki into the ground up to his neck before rising up with a faint grin. I know a few other earth release techniques, but not anything too flashy. He held up his hand and took on a look of concentration. His hand began to spark with electricity, visible currents flickering between his fingertips and along his fingers and palm. And that's all I've got for lightning release, so far. Uruka barked a laugh. Well done. Mr. Ken. There's no need to demonstrate yin release, this is enough for the exam's purposes. I must say I am impressed. But, it's not just up to us. He waved at the observing Jonin, who appeared in another swirl of leaves with Naruto under Shikaku's arm. The boy crossing his arms in a huff at missing his cousin's ninjutsu. 
Shikaku pointedly placed Naruto on the ground before addressing Ken. Or he would have, if Naruto hadn't beaten him to the punch. That was awesome. The boy cried at the top of his lungs. Calm down, Naruto, Ken and Uruka scolded in perfect sync. They glanced at each other in surprise and shared a chuckle at the boy's pout. I am rather impressed, myself, Shikaku noted. He kept it to himself that this boy of no more than his mid-twenties could probably give a tokubetsu janin a run for their money, at least as far as raw power went. I'll be making my report to Lord Hokage, of course. But he gave me the authority to name you a genin. In spite of himself, Ken winced at the junior ninja title. His grandfather had, of course, covered standardized shinobi ranks during his education. The junior genin stood at the bottom of the totem pole, beneath the chunin, journeyman, and junin, elite, with the tokubetsu or, specialized, janin between the latter two. Shikaku chuckled humorlessly at Ken's expression. Sorry, kid, frankly, if it were possible, I'd seriously consider promoting you straight to chunin. But village politics are village politics, and Lord Hokage can't be seen favoring a certain clan. Especially a newly re-established one that holds the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, he mentally added. He did not envy this kid the flack he'd get at the exams, Jen and his age were often marked out as weaklings. But you're not held back at all from the Chunin exams, he added. When will I be permitted to take the exams? Ken asked hesitantly. He hoped they weren't too close within the six-month scheduling, he'd like to get a few months of training and missions to polish his fieldwork. But more than that, he really wanted time to begin Naruto's training in Uzumaki clan arts. The next set of exams are in four months, Shikaku promised, and you have until a week before they begin, the day you'll be leaving, to turn in your registration forms. Until then, you'll be assigned to fill out a different team who've lost a member to injury. They'll meet you here. Ken swallowed and thought over the implications of that. He was invading a previous team. He was happy that whoever had left the team wasn't dead, but he was somewhat aware that teams like this tended to be made up of bonds forged over time. Did he really think he could take the former member's place? Well, he wasn't really being asked to, just to fill in, to re-complete the team. And besides, these were his orders. Yes, Commander, Ken acquiesced. Good man, Shikaku smirked, handing Ken a Konoha forehead protector on blue cloth. As for the rest of you, you're dismissed for the day. Kakashi and I will be reporting to the Hokage. With that, the Jonin commander vanished in a body flicker. I'll be on my way, too, Kakashi noted with a close-eyed smile. Nice to meet ya, Uzumaki. See ya around. With that, he too vanished. Well, if that's that, I'm gonna go take a nice long soak, Mizuki grumbled, leaving without saying goodbye. I have lesson plans to catch up on, too, Uruka said. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Uzumaki. Call me Ken, Uruka, Ken said. Uruka smiled and departed as well. Naruto, you've been awfully quiet, Ken commented. That was so awesome, the blonde cried. You totally kicked instructor Mizuki's butt. And you beat instructor Uruka, and you hit all the posts and stuff, and I'm still mad that I didn't get to see much awesome ninjutsu but it was still so cool. Like that super clone thing you did, where they're actually solid. I wanna learn that, teach me, teach me, teach me. Ken's sweat dropped at the rapid-fire praise and demand, all delivered in one breath. Naruto, calm down, I still haven't. A smoke bomb went off and rapidly cleared to reveal two ninja around Ken's age, a man and a woman, both dressed in the attire of a chunin. Haven't what, Uzumaki, the woman commented dryly. Haven't met your team, yes, he deadpanned. Well hop to it, newbie, the man said smoothly. Time to get to know one another and all that. Ken paused and looked down at Naruto, who seemed to have wilted a bit. Yeah, cousin Ken, you gotta get to know your team. I'll, uh, I'll go back to the house and work on my Kata stuff. He tried to hide it behind a grin, but Ken could already tell that it was a mask for the boy's loneliness. He straightened up and conjured a shadow clone, drawing a gasp of excitement from Naruto. Would you mind if he goes with you? Ken asked his teammates. Both Chunin raised their eyebrows in surprise at the technique. They glanced at each other in silent deliberation. Both were familiar with the nuances of shadow clones in theory, even if neither had been deemed ready to learn it yet. They knew that anything this clone experienced would be passed on to the real Ken. 
Fine by me, the woman smirked. Aoba. I have no reason to argue, Tomoko, he replied. Ken nodded his thanks and looked at his clone. You know what to do, he snarked. Of course I do, the clone replied, I'm you. With that, the clone departed with the two shinobi, which left Ken free to spend the rest of the day with Naruto. So what are we gonna do, cuz? Naruto asked, overjoyed at finally having someone to spend a Saturday with. More training. Because after all that I'm pumped up and ready to jump back in. I know with you to teach me I'll become Hokage ASAP. Ken smiled at his cousin's infectious enthusiasm, but the expression withered as he made a pressing decision. Maybe this evening, if we get through everything else. Everything else. Like what? You're actually gonna teach me that super clone technique. Ken shook his head, his solemn look finally getting to the boy. No, Naruto, not for a while. Today, after some lunch that, as much as it pains me to say, will not be ramen, there are some really important things you need to know. Am I in trouble? Naruto asked. It wasn't uncommon for him to get into trouble for things that either straight up weren't his fault or he had no way of knowing not to do. No, Ken chuckled, but they are very important. He paused, looking around and even taking a moment to use their clan's secret sensory technique to scan for chakra signatures in the area. Finding none, he pressed on. I'm going to tell you what the villagers have against you. And then I'm going to tell you the history of our clan, and maybe why it's down to just us. Spirals hidden in the leaves by Mr. Spinner. Chapter 4. Ken's new team led his shadow clone to a different training ground, this one comprised of groves of trees meant to simulate a forest. Many of the specimens were singed, slashed, or even had rusted weapons sticking out of them, a testament to its purpose. Tomoko took a seat on a fallen trunk while Aoba decided to remain standing. Ken, stood as well, mostly because he didn't know what else to do. For a few moments it was quiet, which allowed the clone to get a good look at his progator's new teammates. Aoba was a somewhat tall and lanky man, with fair skin and dark spiky hair held back by his Konoha headband. Aside from his typical shinobi uniform, he wore a pair of reframed sunglasses that hit his eyes. Tomoko, aside from sharing her teammate's dark hair that she wore in a shoulder-length bob cut and svelte build, was his total opposite. She was a bit on the short side, with tanned skin, dark eyes, and full lips. She wore a sleeveless shirt underneath her flak jacket and a short skirt over knee-length tights and leather calf-high sandals. Her headband hanging around her neck and an armband with the Sarutobi crest around her left upper arm. So how does this work? Ken asked. Do we go around telling each other about what we can do, or... Hold your horses, Red, Tomoko said with a smile. We'll save the tactical junk for later. First and foremost, it's time you learned about something of a tradition among new teams here in Konoha, a get-to-know-you session. A what? Ken asked, honestly stunned. We take turns telling some basic personal stuff, Aoba said, adjusting his shades. Our likes, dislikes, dreams, hobbies, that sort of thing. Some people shake up the topics a bit, but teams have been doing those for for so long that no one really messes with the formula too much. Ken just looked blankly at his new team. Were they seriously interested in his life story? You know what, I'll go first. Hello, my name is Aoba Yamashiro. I'm a 25-year-old Tokubetsu Janin, recently promoted and specializing in intelligence gathering. I like running, puzzles, and yams, and I dislike those who look down upon or underestimate the scholarly. I train, read, and do puzzle books in my spare time and my dream is to one day make Janin and help my recently established clan become more well-known. Ken pursed his lips at the mention of strengthening one's family name. It was something they had in common. I'll go next, Tomoko said. I'm Tomoko Sarutobi. Ken narrowed his eyes in thought at the admission of Tomoko's clan name, suddenly noticing the subtle similarities she held with the Lord Hokage, and before you ask. The Lord Hokage is an older cousin a few times removed. We're a surprisingly large clan, and everyone just calls him, Uncle. Tomoko sighed good-naturedly with the last part, clearly used to people asking about her clan. And that made Ken feel bad about the direction his thoughts had taken, as understandable as it was. Moving on, I'm a 23-year-old Chunin who loves fire, and I enjoy training, peaches, hot springs, and my clan. I dislike those who lack respect and while I don't blame Lord Third for it, 
It can be a little annoying to be identified just by my clan name. Training is my hobby, particularly in my fire release, and I like to take walks and meditate with my personal summon, Yama. My dreams are to become a splendid shinobi to serve my village and my clan, and hopefully make a name for myself. Both of them looked at Ken expectantly. You're up, Red, Tomoko teased. Ken gave her a deadpan look at the repeated nickname before beginning. My name is Ken Uzumaki of the nearly lost Uzumaki clan. Might as well get that revelation out of the way. I'm 23 years old, as well. I like having a family again, and enjoy studying the sealing arts, training, and reading, particularly folk tales and legends. I dislike bigots and those who prey upon the weak. I'm not too keen on Kumo or Kiri, either, he added with a faintly bitter tone. I've never really had time for hobbies, but I guess all of my likes qualify. My dream is to serve my new home, become a respected ninja, and to lay the foundation for the rebirth of my clan. Hmm, interesting, Aoba commented. He specifically meant Ken's apparent dislike of two great villages despite a bigger dislike over bigots. What an intriguing paradox. He couldn't help but grin, looking forward to unraveling the puzzle that was his new teammate. Well, I suppose that's all for today. Just breaking the ice and keeping up tradition. How about we all meet for real training back here? Tomoko suggested. Say, at 8 tomorrow morning. Ken thought it over and, finding no conflict with Naruto's academy schedule, nodded in agreement. Sounds like a plan, indeed. With that, the clone dispersed. Nice guy, Tomoko commented with a faint smile. No arguments there. I truly look forward to seeing how he does tomorrow. Around the time Ken got the influx of memories from his clone, he was finishing up the tea for his and Naruto's little chat. Ken grunted and rubbed his forehead as he began to sort through the memories, drawing Naruto's attention from the dinner table. You okay, Ken? He asked. Fine, Ken replied. Just got the memories from that shadow clone. Memories? Naruto asked, eyes shining. Ken bit back a curse at his distracted slip up. Yeah, one feature of the shadow clone technique is that the clone's experiences are returned to the caster when it dispels. That makes it great for recon missions and stuff like that. Naruto opened his mouth to ask more questions, but Ken held up a hand to stall them. That's not what we should be talking about. Naruto closed his mouth and nodded. Ken poured the tea and wrapped his hands around his own cup, finger tapping at the ceramic as he considered how best to approach the topic. After a little while, he decided to start from the beginning. Naruto, I'm sure you're aware of what happened the day you were born. Naruto's gaze darkened with sadness. Oh yes, he was very aware. That was the day the nine-tailed fox had attacked his home. It was also, for some reason, the day most of the villagers got a little more vocal about how much they hated him. While they had never gotten to the point of violence, their insults and curses got louder and more frequent on his birthdays. Yeah, I am, he whispered. Ken sighed through his nose and sipped his tea. Well, the official story isn't, um, entirely accurate. There are parts of it that have been kept quiet to those who were very young at the time. Parts that involve you. With that, Ken launched into the real story of the Nine Tails attack, omitting nothing except his father's identity, not even the fact that his mother, Kashina Uzumaki, was the previous Jinchuriki of the Fox. Naruto remained uncharacteristically quiet throughout the story, his eyes slowly growing with every detail until they seemed as large as dinner plates. When Ken had finally finished his tale, Naruto was quiet for a few more seconds before. I'm the freaking fox, he cried, tears pooling in his eyes. No wonder the villagers hate me. I, Naruto, Ken thundered, somehow overriding the boy's breakdown. You are not the fox and you never were. Is that clear? From the look on Naruto's face, the tears just on the edge of falling, he knew it wasn't clear. Not to a seven-year-old child. Ken removed a prepared sealing tag from his pocket and placed it on the table. Naruto, look closely. He placed the teapot on top of the tag and triggered it with a small pulse of chakra. The fox is sealed inside you a lot like this teapot was sealed in this tag. Now, is the tag a teapot? Naruto gently prodded at the tag and shook his head. He sniffled and wiped his eyes on his forearm before shaking it more firmly. Exactly, Ken assured, unsealing the pot. Take it from a genuine seal master, you are not the fox. You act as its prison, 
holding it back from rampaging across this village again. Lord Third told me himself that it was the fourth's dearest wish that you be regarded as a hero by this village. Ken grit his teeth. But it seems people are too eager to hate to live up to that wish. That, and few outside of Ninja knew how sealing actually worked. You'd think Lord Third would have explained that, but that was assuming people were willing to listen. So people hate me because I, remind them of the fox. Naruto asked, scratching at the whisker-like markings on his cheeks. Unfortunately, yes, Ken said. People felt they needed something to blame for all of the death and destruction, and you were an easy target. Lord Hokage made a law that forbade speaking of the fox, hoping children would be untouched by their parents' hate. But the adults just told them to avoid you. That's why I asked Lord Hokage to revoke that particular law. It hasn't worked, and maybe your peers will come to accept the great service you do for this village. Ken refilled his teacup and waited for Naruto to respond. After a while, he did, powerfully. Well then I'll just have to show them I'm more than my job. I'm gonna take this burden and carry it to the very top, to the seat of the Hokage. Then I'll have two awesome jobs to keep my village safe. Ken laughed and wrapped Naruto in a hug that he returned with the full force that he could muster. You really are something unique, kiddo. He moved away and ruffled the kid's hair. Enough solemn topics. How about we train a bit, then I'll tell you some cool stuff about our family. Stars practically appeared in Naruto's eyes before he led the charge out the door. And I was not informed of this, why? In the Hokage's office, the Council of Elders, in addition to Danzo Shimura, had called an emergency meeting to discuss the emergence of a certain clan figure. Homura and Kaharu stood before the Hokage, while Danzo decided to stay to the side, as per his habit. You were not informed, Danzo, here is an explained, because you are no longer a member of the council. And as for the rest of you, he glared at his two remaining advisors, it is my duty to oversee our forces. I need not report every little appointment to you. Be that as it may, here is an, Kaharu said, the return of one of the most feared clans in recent history is definitely something you should have at least mentioned. If we are certain that he is who he says he is. The boy had the vibrance of the Uzumaki and knowledge that could only have come from the source, here is an argued. A bit insulted that his own advisors would so easily disregard his judgment and legendary intuition. Information can be taken, Danzo rebutted. Who is to say that an enemy spy did not locate a survivor of Uzushiogakur, use Genjutsu to learn what he could? And then dye his hair and come to us as a ploy to learn our secrets or even attack us outright? Not to mention you have handed the Nine Tails over to him. Very well, Hiruzen said, even his patience wearing thin. I will have blood and chakra tests done to ensure his identity if it will ease your minds. The Uzumaki have quite the unique chakra signature, such a test will prove once and for all his identity. He is still a foreigner, untrustworthy. That is not for you to decide. Here is and finally snapped. And let me make myself clear, none of you will try to goad him like you did the Uchiha. It is our duty to house the remnants of a historical ally of the Leaf, and he has been accepted as a shinobi into our ranks. Here is and took a long drag from his pipe, blowing out the smoke before continuing. And if it would ease your concerns further, I have placed him on a team not only with Aoba Yamashiro, whose intuition is quite sharp, but also with one of my own. Kaharu and Homura glanced at each other before looking back at their leader. A Serutobi? Homura asked, to which Hiruzen nodded. Hmm, very well, I am satisfied for now. Ah, how fortunate, Hiruzen deadpanned. He glanced at Danzo. And you, old friend. Danzo was silent for a few moments before answering. As you command, Lord Hokage, he finally replied. Hiruzen carefully kept his visage neutral, realizing full well that Danzo's reply was distant even for him, and not a technical agreement. He would have to be wary of Danzo for a while in regards to the Uzumaki clan. Now that that is settled, I have paperwork to resume. You are free to stay if you would be kind enough to help. Those words were like war dogs, and the council dispersed in record time just as they always did when he suggested they do so. He laughed humorlessly. Those three were all about voicing their opinions for the village, but when it came to the boring parts of the job they were nowhere to be found. Well, at least he knew a good way to get them out of what remained of his hair.
Ken watched with a critical eye as Naruto practiced with him the katas of the Uzumaki traditional style of combat. Unlike most traditional styles, the Uzumaki style put less of an emphasis on a structured approach to learning. Rather, aside from some reinforced basics, it was designed to embrace the instincts of the user and reinforce their natural approach to combat. This made it exceedingly difficult for outsiders to grasp, but it suited them just fine. Ken tended to dodge attacks or bat them away, then strike with debilitating precision, but that was his own approach. But the style's most fearsome feature was its very lack of predictable structure, making it difficult for even one trained in its use to anticipate. And that facet was something Naruto was clearly naturally accustomed to. But every style, even this one, had a base to work from. And after several hours of coaching his cousin through the movements and running through each loose combination what amounted to dozens of times, he called an end to their training. All right Naruto, that's enough for today. Ah, come on, cuz. I can keep going, till dark. Naruto yelled enthusiastically. I know you can, Ken chuckled. But you'll need sleep tonight to let all of this settle into your muscle memory. He smirked. Besides, I never said training was over, over. We're just gonna tackle something else. Naruto gasped excitedly. Are you finally gonna teach me some awesome ninjutsu? No, Ken deadpanned. Not until I'm certain you can mold chakra properly. And then we'll be focusing on those three e rank techniques before anything else. You've gotta start with the basics, kiddo, before you can tackle the big stuff. Ken settled onto the grass and gestured for Naruto to do the same. Naruto pouted again, but did as he was told. Well, if you're not teaching me awesome ninjutsu, how is it training? I'm going to tell you about some of the unique traits that made the Uzumaki clan so respected before its downfall. Downfall, Naruto asked. That, cousin, is a story for when you are older, Ken said sternly. In all honesty, he wasn't quite ready to tell that story, either. Naruto had already had enough saddening revelations for one day, and the tale of the Uzushiogakur wasn't pleasant on his end. True, he'd never seen the place in its prime, but he had seen the ruins and illustrations of it from his grandfather. Maybe he'd tell that one on Naruto's next birthday or something. Instead, let's focus on some of the things that gave them an advantage, Ken moved on. One of the things that the Uzumaki were known worldwide for was our skill in the sealing arts. But I'll start you on that later. The other was our incredibly powerful life forces. Life forces? Naruto asked. Is that like chakra? Quote dot dot. Yes and no, Ken replied. Chakra is the fusion of physical and spiritual energies. Life force is something even more, inexplicable. While chakra is necessary for life, as in you'll die if you run out, it's more like blood. You'll die if you run out, but it's not where life comes from. And humans didn't always have it. But we did have life force, and that's what truly provides life. So where did chakra come from? Naruto asked. Ken laughed at the question that was so tied to the origins of the Uzumaki. That jumps right to the story I was going to tell you. The Uzumaki clan can trace our lineage back to the very beginning of chakra itself. Have you learned about Hagoromo Otsutsuki yet? Naruto stared blankly at him. Who? The Sage of Six Paths. Ken tried. At Naruto's continued look of confusion, Ken sighed. Yes the academy focused on provable historical facts and not what most considered legends. But he knew the truth, the Uzumaki clan had preserved the story through the generations, even if the Senju and Uchiha had forgotten. The sage was the first man born with chakra. He and his twin brother Hamura were born to a powerful princess, who was the first earthling to have chakra. Legends say she came from, beyond the stars, but don't elaborate. She gained chakra by eating the fruit of something called the Divine Tree, whose fruit only grew every thousand years. With that, he jumped into the story of the sage. He spoke of the Moon Princess's corruption, her merging with the Divine Tree to create the Ten Tails, the beast's battle with the twins and its sealing within the sage. Then he moved on to Hagamoro's sons, Indra and Asura. A prodigy born with powerful eyes and a late bloomer born with a powerful spirit. Both who sought peace, one through power and one th chakra control. Hope you enjoy this what if. And if you did enjoy please like Oak of the Moon Princess's corruption, her merging with the divine tree to create the ten tails, the beast's battle with the twins and its sealing within the sage. 
Then he moved on to Hagamoro's sons, Indra and Asura. A prodigy born with powerful eyes and a late bloomer born with a powerful spirit. Both who sought peace, one through power and one through love. And the feud that had been passed down through the generations. That story keeps going and leads to the founding of Konoha, but you'll learn about that in the academy, Ken wound down. But it's Asura I want you to focus on right now. Can you remember what made him different? Yeah, he never gave up. Like me, Naruto replied fiercely. True, that was a large part of it. But I meant the other thing, the thing he got from his father. Naruto thought back and tried to remember. He had a strong body. Naruto tried. Yes, but that's just an expression. Asura inherited his powerful life force and physical energy from the sage. That was passed on to his descendants, the Senju clan. Senju. Now that name rang a bell. Senju like the first and second Hokage? Naruto asked. The very same, Ken confirmed. Our clan, the Uzumaki clan, were like a cousin clan to the Senju. We can trace our lineage to Asura, too. And through him, the sage. And we, too, inherited Asura's powerful life energy. And that very fact gave us an edge against other ninja clans and villages. Whoa. Naruto gasped. Like what? The Uzumaki's life force grants us incredible vitality, which in turn manifests in insane stamina, healing abilities, and recuperation. Which means we can keep up action for way longer, we bounce back faster, and we heal up quicker. We also get extra longevity, which means we live longer and age slower. If an Uzumaki survived to retirement, it wasn't uncommon for them to hit the hundred year mark. Ken sighed and continued. It also manifests in huge reserves of extra potent chakra. We tend to have about four times the average chakra supply. Most of this flew over Naruto's head. He was, after all, barely closing in on eight years old. But he got the gist of it. Awesome stamina and healing, with a huge chakra pool. So this means I'm gonna be an awesome ninja. Naruto cheered. Man, this kid has a one-track mind, Ken snarked silently. No, it means you have the potential to be an awesome ninja. You'll have to work hard to tap into that. You got it, Cousin Ken. I'm gonna train harder than anyone ever, and I'll be an awesome ninja and a shoe in for Hokage. Not for the first time, Ken laughed at his cousin's enthusiasm. Well, Mr. Future Hokage, I think it's time to turn in for the night. After all, I gotta train with my team, and I'm sure you want a head start on the training, too. As he got up, a thought crossed his mind. Wait, just one last thing. Ken knelt before Naruto and formed a hand seal to help focus his chakra, preparing an Uzumaki secret technique. All Uzumaki had different strengths in regards to their clan techniques, and Ken was no exception. He was excellent at one in particular, practically a prodigy, but he still had limited aptitude with this one even after years of training. But he needed to know something, and this was the fastest way to figure it out. Mind's eye of the Kagura, he thought, his physical eyes closed to better focus on his metaphysical one. With a sensation like a mental stretch, he felt his mind's eye open, allowing him to perceive chakra around him. He could see his own familiar signature in the silhouette of his arms, but focused instead on Naruto's. And what he found stunned him enough to almost lose the technique. Holy father of Asura, he thought. Naruto's chakra levels could rival a seasoned Jonin and the kid was only a second-year academy student. Wait a minute, what was that? Ken focused harder and swallowed thickly. Not all of the chakra was Naruto's. He could tell that Naruto's chakra was a bright yellow, but a massive reserve of darkly red chakra was mixed with it, the result a deep orange tinge to his chakra pool. The fox, Ken realized. After a few more moments, Ken released the technique and took a shuddering breath. Ken, Naruto asked. Ken had been stone still for the last minute or so, only his lips moving as if he were thinking too hard or maybe in pain. I'm okay, Naruto. Just gotta look at your chakra. It's an Uzumaki secret technique that I'll teach you when your control is better. He grinned and stood up. But it seems that having that fox inside you isn't all bad. I'll have to examine your seal tomorrow to be sure, but I think it's designed to let the fox's chakra leak out and mix with yours which multiplies your reserves even more. Naruto's mouth dropped and he jumped in excitement before running inside, barely pausing to take off his shoes. Ken smiled and followed, his mind working double time. 
he would have to examine the seal, and he'd have to contact Lord Third and see if there were any other side effects of Naruto's condition. As he prepared himself and the kid for bed, his thoughts turned to Naruto's training. He couldn't just focus on taijutsu, he'd have to broach the topic of ninjutsu sooner or later. And with Naruto's truly monstrous chakra pool, he was a natural-born ninjutsu specialist. But everything comes with a cost, and massive chakra reserves were no exception. With that thought, he nodded and wrote his decision on the back of a used ceiling tag. Chakra Control. Hope you enjoy this what if. And if you did it.